not know, there's actually a number of resorts in the Alps which open year round, or at the very least they have separate summer, winter and autumn seasons. Unfortunately for me, none of them are in France. Teens always used to open in October. Indeed, I had an absolutely amazing weekend for the opening weekend of the season, I think four years ago there now. Really nice powder, bluebird skies, and it was even possible to ski all the way down to the resort at the end of the day as well on a combination of man-made and natural snow. But unfortunately, the last two years there's been basically no snow in autumn. A combination of hot, dry summers and lean winters meant that the glasses were just too dangerous to open. So they finally cut, decided to cut the losses and they're no longer opening in the autumn season. Outdoors and Le Deux Alpes also offer summer glacier skiing, but again, as far as I'm aware, neither of them are opening in autumn anymore. So sadly, if you want to go skiing in the Alps in October, you've got to go further east. The closest resort to Chamonix to offer year-round skiing is of course Zermatt, but being in Switzerland and being Zermatt is crazy expensive. It's also logistically really difficult to ski there because Along with Sassvain and Abring Valley, they're closed resorts, you can't drive to them. Which means parking your car somewhere and getting the train or bus up to the resort, which as well as being an extra logistical barrier to going there, is also really, really expensive. There's no free parking in Switzerland. So as nice as it would be to actually visit Zermatt, I've never been there before. I've been close, of course I've climbed the Matterhorn, but yeah, I've never actually seen the Matterhorn from Zermatt. So it would have been nice to go there, but yeah, it's just not feasible really. So instead, I'm driving right past there to the homeland of October skiing really, which is the Austrian Tyrol. This does mean I've got a whopping 10 hour drive to get there instead of what would have been a little over two hours to get to Zermatt, but it's gonna be, gonna be worth it because there's five resorts open in the Austrian Tyrol already. And if you include Austria as a whole, I've got seven resorts to choose from, whereas if I went to Zermatt and Tass Bay, that's just two. Okay, there's also Engelberg and St. Moritz in Switzerland, which are open in the autumn, but they're really spread out anyway. So I still have a massive journey to drive to cover all four. Whereas if I head to Innsbruck area, I can get five within about an hour of Innsbruck. I could have made the journey a lot quicker by taking the highway and driving the long way round, but I'm doing this trip on a budget. I don't know what the budget is, but basically to spend as little money as possible. It's only expensive enough as it is going skiing for five or six days without a season pass, let alone paying for tolls and motorways as well. So yeah, it would take six or seven hours to get to Austria if I drove around the Swiss motorway, but I haven't got a bin yet. And as it's nearly November now, it's not worth buying one as it runs out in a month or so. Also be avoiding taking any tunnels as well which might have cut a little bit of time off the journey. Certainly would have cut a little bit of distance off but then I'd also be missing out on driving over some amazing mountain passes so yeah. Doing on a budget means slower, longer but more enjoyable trip. rather boring drive along the very flat, very wide valley bottom of the Rhone Valley. Sure, you're surrounded by mountains and impressive scenery, but you could just be in the suburbs of Geneva or anywhere for, as far as the driving is concerned. Except worse, because it's almost as straight as a ruler in many sections. But now, slowly but surely, we're starting to climb again, up towards the Furka Pass. This is still the Rhone to my right, I believe, but yeah, definitely feeling a lot more alpine now. The architecture's changed, the vegetation's changing, and more importantly, the road's starting to wind again. So yeah, this should be one of the highlights of the trip, driving-wise anyway. This is very Swiss. The dark natural wooden chalets, the churches with the pointy spires, the cows and the lush green pastures. Yeah, picture postcard Switzerland.
place is stunning. You can visit a ice grot or ice cave up there, and it's the, the Rhone Gletscher, which I guess that means this is the Rhone, or the source of the Rhone. So I was right. Yeah, what an unbelievable road and what an absolutely beautiful spot. Like the Von Trapp family in reverse, I climbed every mountain and forded every stream and late last night I finally made it from Switzerland into Austria. One of the cool things about arriving somewhere after dark is you never quite know what you're going to wake up to, but check this out. Pretty beautiful. Don't worry, you're nearly at the skiing, as am I. This wouldn't be a road trip video if I didn't include some of the journey. And check this out. How cool is this? There's even a giant slide into the lake. I shall have to check this out on my way home. I'm going to be needing a wash anyway. On the ski itinerary for day one, we have Kunatau. No, I'd never heard of it either. Some of the other resorts I'll visit are quite big household names, such as Solden for example, but not this one, which is kind of exciting. This is the westernmost of the Tyrolean Glacier resorts which are open, so quite simply, coming from Chamonix direction, it's the one I've reached first, which is why I'm here. I believe it's the smallest of all the ski areas open in Austria, but it is quite hard to tell judging from the piece maps, but certainly in terms of number of runs and number of lifts open, it looks to be the smallest, but we shall see. Despite being the smallest of the ski areas, this could well be end up being the most expensive day of my trip because all the areas offer dynamic ticket pricing. If you, so if you book online, you can save 20, maybe even 30% from the full ticket price. But I didn't book a ticket in advance today because I didn't actually know if I was going to make it or not. So playing it by ear a little bit, which means I'm probably going to have to pay full price, but that's okay. So from here on up, it's a toll road. I'm under the impression that if you've got lift pass and you're going skiing then the toll road is free because obviously it's the only way to get to the ski area but as of yet I don't have lift pass so I'm not quite sure what to do. I guess I should just have to go up to the desk and ask and hope they speak English. During the winter there's also a ski bus which is of course free if you've got ski gear and a ski pass but again I've not yet got my ski pass, I'm not yet wearing my ski gear and I don't know if the bus is operating this time of year so all a big mystery. Let's go find out. Her English is much better than my German anyway, no surprises there. So you can just basically buy your ski ticket at the toll booth and then the price of the toll road is included in that pass, so 70 euros for a day. Pretty expensive but not bad when you consider what you're getting. This is it, Kunatau. I'll talk it feels like an eternity, probably for you as well as me. And finally, skis down on snow. After all that effort, bang on cue, it's raining. I can't win. It's a bit of a strange resort. Usually glacier ski areas, apart from much bigger ski areas, 
you get a series of big lifts all the way up the valley bottom to get to the glacier, ski around at the top, and get a lift down again at the end of the day. Whereas here, got much more of a Scottish or even Kiwi vibe. You drive up for miles and miles to get here. The car park's 2,750 meters, so yeah, you drive a long, long way to get here. And then basically the ski area is just this basin that you see here. There are a few lifts that extend below this car park to a lower car park. So in winter, it is a bigger ski area, but it's not massive and it's very remote and isolated. It doesn't really link up anywhere else, but still kind of cool. And there doesn't actually appear to be much in the way of glacier left up here for a glacier ski area. I am standing on ice here right now, but most of the runs are actually on a combination of fern and new season snow. I think they might even farm some snow. There's a big pile of snow with some sheets on down by the car park. So yeah. <laughs> races have all gone in for lunch. Maybe they've even gone down, they've taken the gates away. And no exaggeration, there's only me and three other skiers on the entire mountain. This is insane, never had this before. And the icing on the cake is the sun's almost coming out as well, so it's no longer flat light or raining. Kuna Tower's claims to fame, other than its 10 month ski season of course, is its Black Ibex piste, which is obviously closed right now, but it's claimed to have the steepest on piste pitch anywhere in Europe. So that's quite impressive. They also claim to have the longest tunnel of any ski area in Europe. It's just through there. Longer even the, the tunnel run at Alcaraz. That's it for day one of my two day and ski road trip. Not the best, but not the worst either. Far from it. The weather was a bit grim, warm and damp, and the snow is very, very sticky. Unfortunately, I've missed all the sweet, sweet powder they had here for about a week, but then I was skiing that sweet powder off the Gita Midi in Germany, so I can't complain too much. Things should improve a bit from here. The other resorts I'll be going to are bigger and they've got higher top stations so the snow should be a bit better and certainly for tomorrow the weather should be a bit better as well. Slightly colder and brighter skies, more sun so yeah. Plenty to look forward to. For now I've got to get down off this mountain and find some way to sleep tonight. So I thought my day was going to be over before it barely even started. As I was getting off the gondola for my second run the lifty came over and basically told me off for being on touring skis without brakes which is a problem which never really occurred to me. Skiing in France and in the French part of Switzerland, nobody gives a shit what you do, you can do whatever you want. So yeah, probably 50% of the people in Chamonix are on some kind of touring setup at any given time anyway. So perfectly normal to be skiing on piste on touring gear. Sure, having brakes or at least a leash would have been better, but done it before and had no problems. But yeah, he was not having it at all. He just kept saying, this is not right, this is not right. And yeah, obviously Austria being very Germanic, Rules are rules. Everything's done a certain way. But anyway, I kept skiing. Didn't take the lift pass off me. This isn't America. But fingers crossed the other resorts I go to being bigger are also busier and therefore I draw less attention to myself because otherwise I've driven a hell of a long way to not get much skiing in if somebody else tries to tell me off as well. Of course, I would much rather have been on piste gear. I mean, the skis can handle a bit of carving on piste, but lightweight probably touring boots are really not great for being on piste, but that's all I've got, so knees must. 90% of my ski gear is still back home in the UK at the moment. I've not had my biannual gear swap yet, so I've just got the lightweight touring stuff. But anyway, tomorrow I'm off to Pitts Tower, which is just literally hop over into the next valley. Super close as the crow flies, but of course you have to drive all the way down this valley and back up the next one. I've just bought my ticket already online, which saved 11 euros, and it's not much for every little counts. Now that I've got the smart card, of course I can do that. I must have 20 or more smart cards back home from French, Italian and Swiss resorts but you can guarantee that not one of them will work here in Austria, which is just ridiculous, but that's the way it is. This is probably it for part one of this video, but tune in for part two when I guarantee there'll be much, much more skiing and a lot less driving, because I'm already here. See you next time.